So today I wanted to talk about art. And more specifically, what exactly is it? Within the last year and a half, we have had a surge of new faces here exploring art for the first time. And as someone who has dedicated their entire channel to helping non-artists learn how to create it fast, it's been a lot of fun watching people with random backgrounds like accounting, data scientists, doctors, engineers, programmers, chefs, and firefighters exploring their imagination and starting to dive deep into the higher level art concepts like color balance, Contrast, design, scene placement, themes, styles, genres, photography angles, lenses. There's a whole world of art theory and vocabulary jargon out there that people are encountering for the first time. And for many of those people, I thought this would be a nice video to just introduce them to the concept of art in general in its most basic and fundamental form. So when I say art, I am not just referring to images and pictures. That is just one tiny fraction of what the traditional art community actually considers art. So we're talking about all art as a whole. But before we continue, I'd like to ask you a question. What is art? How do you know when you've seen it? How much time and effort are required before something qualifies as art to you? Does it even matter? Pause the video and leave your answer down below. If you write something within 24 hours of releasing this video, I promise I'll read it. And at the end of this video, I want you to go back to your comment and let me know if you change your answer and why. This is always a fun question to ask new artists, so if you drop a comment, I promise I'll read it. So I would love to see what you guys have to say about this. All right, so did you write your answer? Okay. To really explore the answer to this question, I would like to share a classical philosophical art piece from René Margarite. There's a famous painting that you can find in a museum called This Is Not a Pipe. Now at first this painting seems a little weird because there's clearly a pipe in the picture, but the words beneath it say, this is not a pipe. So what's going on here? Why isn't it a pipe? It looks like a pipe, but if you ask the artist who drew it, he would tell you the painting is self-explanatory. It's an art piece of a pipe. But it's not a pipe itself. The painting doesn't have any of the characteristics or utilities of a real pipe. You can't use the picture in any way that you could use an actual pipe. And the sentence at the bottom is meant to explain that the word pipe in reality is also disconnected from the actual tangible object it represents. The word could change or it could be translated into any language, but the pipe itself would remain the same. So if this work is not a pipe, what is it? Well, it's kind of just art. And that is how the artist was hoping you would interpret this piece. In the same line of thought, I want you to imagine the scene when John Wick is violently attacked by the Russian mafia. They shoot at him in his house, and they barely miss and hit the wall. Now pause. Would you consider the bullet hole in the wall art? This is not a trick question. Most of us would not consider the bullet hole art. But let me ask you another question. If after the battle, John Wick sectioned off that area of the wall and framed it, and donated that piece to a museum and named it Violence. And the description read, created on October 2014. This piece was created during a real firefight when a man was forced to stand his ground and defend his house against hostile intruders. The artist is hoping this piece will spread awareness to others about the violent nature of home invasions. So I ask you now, what is the difference between these two bullet holes? They are literally and physically exactly the same. But why is it so hard for most people to consider the random hole in the wall art, while the version of it that is framed with a statement and purpose fits very naturally into a museum? If you wanted to take this a step further, let's say somebody empties a hundred shots of machine gun fire into a wall. Now let's say that same person empties another hundred shots of machine gun fire into a different wall. But this time, the bullet holes make this pattern. Same exact process, same exact materials, medium, technique, and the person who fired them. But why is this one considered art and this one not? The questions you have to ask yourself are, at what point does motion become a dance? At what point does noise become a song? At what point do words become a poem? At what point do sentences become a story? At what point does paint become a painting? At what point does mud become a pot? At what point does smell become perfume? And at what point do pixels become a picture? How you decide to answer these questions will very likely reflect how you see art. And I'm not saying there is a right answer or that I have the answer. Everyone has their own definition of art and it means different things to different people. But I'll share the conclusion that I've come to after thinking about these questions for many years. First, art can be made from anything. 
There is no unique vibranium art element that all art is forged from. You can use lead, ink, paint, sound, smell, motion, from really anything and turn it into art. Likewise, any non-art material can still become art. People make art out of old newspapers, cardboard, or even literal garbage all the time. Second, there is no time or effort requirement for something to be considered art. When Picasso made the famous three-line drawing of a woman, just because it took him seconds to draw and it was easy for him, doesn't make it any less artistic or valuable compared to other random paintings out there that took longer or were maybe more difficult. Just because a move is short and easy doesn't disqualify it from being a dance. There's never been some sort of law that says, if your painting didn't take at least 5 minutes and 30 seconds to create, it's not art. Or if your movement doesn't at least burn 30 calories, it's not a dance move. When you walk out on a beautiful autumn day and take a picture, just because it only took you 10 seconds to pick up your phone and press that button doesn't disqualify your image from being called photography. So when you put all this together and you look at all art and really try and find what is the common thread between a song and a painting? What's the common thread between a silly dance and an epic story? What's the common thread between this is not a pipe and a handcrafted clay pot? Well, I personally believe that the fundamental core that runs through all of these things is they are all an expression of an idea. The act of bringing your imagination into reality. Art can be expressed in any way, with any material, any sound, smell, taste, motion, or visual aid. The work of art can be big, it can be small, long, short, easy, hard, or anything in between. But the one thing that every work of art has in common is that essentially, they are all an attempt to bring an idea into reality. How that idea is expressed depends on the artist's preferred tools, talents, skills, medium, and intention. Some of us use art to practice a skill. Some of us use art to reach our goal. Some of us use art to decompress and relax. And some of us use it to simply share what they feel with the world. And that is why I believe art in the simplest term is the result when someone brings their imagination into reality. Your words become a story when you decide you are writing a story. Your movements become a dance when you feel like dancing. When what you do is a form of expression of how you feel. You decide when you bring art into this world. And you decide when you become an artist. And no one can ever take that decision away from you. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching. And as always, hope you have a fantastic day. And I'll see you around.